Yeah, I got a bum hole. So what? Yeah, I got a bum hole. That's hot. Welcome to another episode of the Three Speech Podcast. I'm the mad lad of Jihad. I'm coming to you from parts unknown next to my swimming pool. I've got a very special guest, comedian extraordinaire, organizer of the Let Women Speak March Adelaide. It's Miss Biddy O'Loughlin. Woo! Welcome to the pod, Biddy. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Darius. It's hey. good to be here. That wasn't our third time starting it, but whatever. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. So for the listeners and the viewers, who, who are you? And I'm Biddy O'Loughlin. I'm a comedian and a single mum. And um, I yes, today was part of a women's event um, called Let Women Speak. I didn't actually organise it, but I helped, if you know what I mean, um, on the ground for Adelaide. And uh, the event is basically about women letting them have a, a place to speak because a lot of us have been silenced on, um, you know, the issue of what happens when society lets men. And you, di- so ju- just to summarise three speech pod position on this is that we we are against women speaking they should be at the kitchen at all times but that's just our old misogynistic toxic views but so you you organized this event with kelly j keen aka posey parker um and you kind of yeah i just saw a video of you this morning where you were you were speaking yesterday um and well simon will edit this in but it was quite it seemed like it was quite a traumatic difficult way to speak there's a lot of i could i could feel the hostility from just the video and it's just on you and i could feel as well that's pretty brave and you didn't say i I mean the clip's only 30 seconds long but you're like i'm a comedian i and i'm in the arts and i've suffered for saying you know women should have women only spaces for example so yeah take us through it and And women don't have penises whoa my women always have penises no (laughs) yeah so i didn't organize the event it's all been organized through standing for women who they're based in the uk with um but i helped on the ground here with some other south australian women um basically i'll take you back a little bit i was um just happily minding my own business doing comedy and then i got pregnant uh during the lockdowns or you know not during but like when it was 2020 i wasn't socially distancing um (laughs) when, when you were allowed to meet other people and then I was uh, watching Trigonometry, actually, um, your friends. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to that one. And um, Kelly J. Keen was a guest. And I remember the episode of Trigonometry. It was called Trans Women Aren't Women. And it sort of jolted me because I was like, shit, you're not meant to say that. And like, I'd never really thought of it too critically before. I knew in my heart of hearts they weren't really women, but I didn't really, you know – think too much about it and then I watched this podcast with Kelly J Keen and she piqued me as we say um that's when the penny drops what the ramifications of this ideology are is for women she red pilled you yeah. yeah um you could say that although she's a strong lefty but or yeah. was I don't know what she is now but she's just pro woman and um a really brave person mm-hmm. yeah and then so I was quietly peaked i didn't post anything so and when you say she peaked you mm. so you're watching like what was your like before what was your kind of thinking and then what what's changed and like i guess oh, i can't even um in less than an hour i saw that she was absolutely right that women cannot give an inch on this issue or we lose so much okay so can you summarize i've spoken to some other people about this and that well you know it's we just you know well, we can't we need to we we're women we need to use it like what what is it that like summarize the position like what you see yeah because i think there's i think there's a nuance to it right i can understand like, when it comes to it's not like as black and white as it yeah both sides want to kind of make it out to be but it's nuanced because there's even when it comes to trans women themselves there's you know there's a there's a scale of being a trans woman right and I, I believe they call it like like it's trans misogyny, and what that like. There's a trans woman who just one hundred percent pass. You wouldn't know. Would would you have a problem with them, for example, like using the toys? Because I think if I, if I was to say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a woman," and then you will have to respect me as a woman. You know what I mean? Then I can understand that. So I'm just. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yesterday, I found out actually a man that I know uh, is. Well, I thought he was a woman. Absolutely did not know that um, biologically he's a man. 
I guess he would have transitioned in the 80s. And I say he because I don't want to lie to myself like mm-hmm. or gaslight myself. I wouldn't say he to him because I'm, you don't use people's pronouns like that. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I understand. Um, and I was thinking about it last night because it blew my mind. I was like, whoa, that's a man. Like, obviously he's had his bits cut off and I wouldn't have known. I mean, now I can kind of tell him like, yeah, there aren't many hips there. Um, <laughs> there's tits, no hips. But women have all sorts of body shapes anyway. Um, so, no, I don't think I'm threatened by him as a man in a woman costume, I suppose, mm-hmm. because he doesn't have a working penis. But I am kind of a little bit freaked out by why like, – I feel like that's a rooster in a chicken coop pretending – I feel a bit um, violated mm-hmm. in a weird way. Like I'm like, oh, you tricked me. Like you're a man and you're tricking me. That sort of makes me feel really, um, yeah, just insulted maybe a little bit that you think. Because when he dies or if his bear, his body is dug up in a hundred years' time, it'll be that was a man. Mm-hmm. With the, the, and someone said to me yesterday, the person who told me that it was a man, they were like, oh, yes, and she's had the operation. She's fully a woman. And I was like, mm. We're not dickless men mm-hmm. with long hair, All right. wearing That's skirts. A bit personal, <laughs> <laughs> I've got big. Di- no, but no, I get it. So, but, but like you say, you say your interest was like you say you were peaked. So mm. before you know you, the pandemic, because I think everyone's right now. They're saying, "Oh, well, we always talk about trans rights." In fact, I've read an article this today about Joe Rogan's opening a new comedy club. And I was reading on the website, and they were like, oh, he's working in this safe space because he's like, make, they're taking a the piss out of his clubs, and they just want to make fun of trans people. And this is this is what comedians want to do now is go in and make, and that's why they need to put their lock their phones away, right? But the the reason why comedians we kind of feel like, oh, we want to talk about trans issues now is because it's it's in the news every day. There's something happening, so so this has come to our attention. This people weren't talking about this five years ago because it wasn't happening five years ago, mm-hmm. but now every day trans issues are in the news so i think my question then is like when it wasn't in the news and was it maybe make a more louder noise ollie um like was this an issue to you like you said it peaked like what were your your thoughts then it peaked me because kelly um sort of made me realize that we can't give away womanhood like it's insulting it's also very dangerous um when you get you know, people with penises in women's prisons, if their penises are mm-hmm. working, you know. You well, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's it is. why. Well, that's why, um, obviously, a name for the pin, what's a Scottish? First... Isla Bryson. Or... Well, yeah, oh. and that's why Nicola Sturgeon fell, right? Because it's like, but this is what I'm talking about. See, She's that... a handmaiden. Yeah, well, this is the, well, well, tell us what a handmaiden is. Someone who puts men's right to a uh, woman face above women's safety and children's safeguarding. They literally care more about these men's feelings than women's safety. So how And their virtue signalling. They want to be, you know, on the right side of history, but they're ironically on the wrong side. Well I think I, I think a lot of wokeism is just virtue signaling. Everything is is, is virtue signaling. But in so like I think well, this is, Isla Brighton is kind of a perfect example, right? And then you've got your the your friend that you knew who was like, you wouldn't have known wasn't a woman. Yeah. Right. So there's a different, you see what I mean by there's a new, like. My, what? the person I know, the man who I fig- found out yesterday was uh, a man, not yeah. a woman. Um, They would have been old school transvestite, I reckon, because he looks just like, uh, like, like I said, I couldn't tell. So I think he was transitioning way back in the eighties, mm-hmm. probably had a nose job, all sorts of things to pass. And he does really well. And that's frightening. That's really scary. So you find you would find so someone like that you think can't. It's be just narcissism. He thinks women are so nothing that he can be one. Fuck off. But, well, but from their perspective, maybe they think like I'm. I truly believe I'm a woman. I've gone because I think you know, yeah. Well, that's you, a mental disorder. Okay. Uh, nobody can be born in the wrong body, and I, you know, I empathise with people who think that they are. That's a genuine mental illness Mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah um that's what I think and um like their ideology is so flawed logically it's like but I feel like a woman it's like how do you know what a 
what a woman feels like if you've never been one. I don't know what it feels like to be a man. I could imagine, I could empathize, but I don't know what it feels like. Yeah, and then you get the cyclical argument. What is a woman? Yeah, what someone I who def- identifies as a woman. Uh, but what is a woman? Someone who identifies. Ident- so, yeah. So what? So what? So, so, so your interest is with Pete. So now, like, what? What's your like? Because you, as a comedian, obviously, this is like. I think right now Death. it's possibly the uh, this is the worst kind of position you can take. Absolutely. Well, I think it's slowly changing, right? I think I do yeah. feel that the, this things are swinging back and people are kind of pushing back against not just like wokeism in general, right? I can feel that's kind of as and I'm using wokeism obviously like a but all this yeah. kind of like virtue the signaling. main the, the main population of the world like would be mostly not in you know, indoctrinated into this ideology, but the media is and the governments are and the very small um, number of trans right activists are very, very loud, like yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like that was the first time because I've posted things. I know... Uh, even when people in the industry... Tell us about yesterday, like from from the start. Yeah, right. So um, found out that Kelly J. Keane was coming to Australia a couple of months ago and I was like, how do I help? Mm -hmm. What do I do? And got in touch and they vetted us um, because, you know, we could be some crazy trans rights activists who, Mm. like, they looked at us. Okay, so I'll go back a bit. Sorry. Um, Speaking, like, I've posted and stuff over the last couple of years and I know that I've lost work even if I don't know what it is, you know. Like, I know my life would be very different if I hadn't spoken up about this. I just want to interrupt. Biddy is genuinely a fantastic comedian. You're like really like tight writing, really well, like really good comedian. We like I'm just you should be by all intents and purposes, you would be the the the, the poster girl for if they were to look for a female comedian, it would be someone like like yourself because you're funny, tight, young, you know, tight writing. I meant obviously. Um, a bit prepared. um but you know what I mean. But like you, yeah, you yeah, should yeah. be like that that like I was like you should be a star. Um, so I can see that you know you you're outspoken yeah i um i knew that this was going to fuck with that but mm. it was more important f- to me um to stand up to it and also for my daughter who is 21 months old i do this so that she doesn't have to like i'm prepared to take the hit for my career to to chip away at this insanity just a little bit because people do say you're a single mum leave this to other people But if everybody did that, nobody would stand up to it and it would just become like women are nothing. We're we're just dickless men. Well, well, what are you afraid of happening? Like, so I... I, Well, uh, what is already happening, men being in women's categories in the Olympics, men being put into women's prisons, um, us all being too scared to speak the truth or our truth because it's quite religious. It's faith-based, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Like there's, they believe they're born in the wrong body. Other people believe in Jesus and stuff. Mm. Um, and they've got the right to believe in gender ideology, this effectively religion. Mm-hmm. Um, but what they don't have the right to do is enforce it on society and change legislation and the reality of vulnerable women mm. in prisons and rape shelters and children in change rooms and things to, to, to make themselves feel validated. Mm-hmm. as the opposite sex um you don't get to demand everybody but but but, but there being trans people like this isn't a f- trans people aren't a new phenomenon although like i said it's it, obviously the last five years it's ramped this is all trans people now right it's funny when you look on the internet searches for anorexia has gone down mm-hmm. as trans mm-hmm. search has gone up so mm-hmm. you know could argue that this is i would have been trans for sure yeah. Absolutely. If I was born 10 years later, I wouldn't have stood a chance. Really? I would have had my breast cut off and I would have a little beard right now. You'd have looked like me. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's so, so you th- so you think this is just what, like social contagion I believe or like what I, yeah. yeah, social contagion. I don't when people say trans has been around for gen- like hundreds and thousands of years, no it hasn't. Gender nonconformity has been around since the dawn of time. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And that would be that would be women who don't conform to you know gender stereotypes. Yeah, and um, I mean, I guess in the, like and boys who don't yeah. conform to gender stereotypes. You so know, like, feminine men and masculine women. We they exist. Um, yeah. Like hair metal bands. 
<laughs> Guns N' Roses was they were, could it be they could they were just like it's not yeah like we were dressing up as David Bowie like everyone was dressing up and you know playing gender roles um yeah exactly yeah. It was, exactly it's always a thing but but here's kind of where I'm here here's why I'm at. I don't think it's not my obviously it's not my place right mm. to say who can go in and I don't think we I don't actually, I don't think trans women should be allowed in contact physical sports no I just think that. I think that, you know, if you, chess, yeah, go ahead. I think women should be able to play and it doesn't matter. It's the chess, right? It's a mental thing. But if it's a physical thing, even if you've had your testosterone suppressed or whatever, you've still gone through kind of male puberty. You're still, you know, it's just like... It's de- yeah, so your it's bone density is yeah. different, your muscle mass, everything. So it's a safeguarding issue and it's, it's that that's where I feel and stand on that. When it comes to the toy, like toilet issue, which is a huge issue, I don't think I'm, it's not my place to say who can, you know, I'm not a woman, so I shouldn't be allowed to say that. But I can understand when I speak to some trans women and they're, like I said, they're not like me in a thing. Like, like, so I was chatting to, to Jenny Hart, we had her on the pod and she was like, I need to go and I need to do my makeup. And I was like, that makes sense because you couldn't really as a, you know, you couldn't go into the men's and be standing there doing your makeup. It's you weird. could, well, but you you're could. too scared to face the men, so you go and cower in the women's. It's like we are not as uh, like human shields for men who think they're going to get bashed by men for putting makeup on. Yeah. Go, I don't know, man. Like it's not our job to protect these men mm-hmm. who feel vulnerable around men because they're dressing as women. Mm-hmm. It's not our job. No, I understand it. So, that, but I guess then my question is like, we are here, right, where we are in society. And I think there's, you know, we've come this far and we're at this level. And the point is, are we going to, you know, are we going to accept that as a reality that these trans women, trans men exist and they, at the moment, they want to use these other toilets or what is the solution? Because I don't think we are, oh, we can roll this back. Like, like what is a realistic kind of yeah. like, solution? But and, and bear in mind, and also you have to remember, right? I get it, right? Some... There are some, you know, like trans rights activists, and they just didn't, you know, they're they're just crazy. They're just, you know, they you you look at them and like, come on now, that's I wouldn't be safe with wouldn't I wouldn't feel safe in the room with you, let alone like in a small toilet with you, you know, in the whatever. So I, but but mo- the majority of trans people, they're not like the trans rights activists. They just want to get up, go to their job. They're not drag queen story hour. They're like, I want to get up, go to my job dress as a passable woman like your friend you have no clue about mm. and I just want to kind of live my life or like so how because that's the, the majority and the majority on, on both sides have been like you said there's a loud voice from these uh, trans right activists who cause and they've got a loud voice on social media which generates the conversation right but taking them aside most trans people I think just want to go about their lives so what is the kind of what is your kind of like what do you want to happen because I think yeah it is a tricky situation. Like, what do we do with, like, the wom- man, sorry, who passes very well as a woman? Mm-hmm. Like, what do we no, do but, with that? Because for them, I don't think it's even an issue. This isn't even an issue. If you didn't know, it wouldn't be. They, if they don't say And if anything, they don't have a working penis, sure, you know, and if I didn't know. But I just think it's a little bit insulting that he thinks he can be a woman. But mm-hmm. that aside, whatever, it is a tricky situation because there are a lot of people out there who would probably pass as the other sex and we don't know. Um so here is an argument from our side mm-hmm. is that, uh, yes, some men think they're women, dress like women, believe in their soul that they were born in the wrong body, mm-hmm. and that is totally fine. They're allowed to think that, but you'd have to be a freaking idiot and naive as fuck to think that a predator wouldn't think, oh, now society thinks it's acceptable for me to put on a dress and get into women's spaces. Mm-hmm. They will do that. 100%. And, and the fact that we're not allowed to speak about that, it just ex- um, exposes the misogyny behind it, that, that people are like, shut up, women. You know, that wouldn't happen. You know, women are getting raped in prisons by male prisoners mm-hmm. who have identified as female. And someone said to me once when I said that, you know, it's an actual fact. It has happened. Mm -hmm. Um, They said, yeah, but it doesn't happen very often. And I was just like, tell that to the fucking woman getting raped, that her rape does not matter because it's not, you know, statistically huge. Mm -hmm. And it happened in uh, in a ward on the NHS in in the the UK back home. And then when they reported it, 
They said the doctor said to the police or said to whoever the police were put. It couldn't have happened. There were no ma- males. There were no on men on the ward. Yeah, yeah, ward. yeah. So, so the fact that society is not even thinking about the consequences, right? Of how do we deal with this situation? But like why right now, think- society is just going shut up, women. Accept these men as women, or you're a bigot. And we're just like, hang on. There's a few things we want to discuss, mm-hmm. and that's what the event was about yesterday. It was about women speaking. We were not allowed to speak. Like so we how- were, but like the trans right activists were literally drowning us out. We could barely hear ourselves speak. We weren't there to say we hate trans people and they should all be murdered and they should be sterilized and die. Like that's all fucking defamation. Mm-hmm. They they literally don't know what our arguments are because they won't listen to us. Okay, and so we are, are very you- affected by this and nobody will listen to us. Okay, so what, let, 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 what are your arguments then? Let's, let's go through. Well, that people who self-identify shouldn't be allowed in like self ID should not be a thing, mm-hmm. right? Um, you can't just suddenly go, "Oh, I'm a woman. I'm a woman yeah. today. I'm a man yesterday. I'm a man tomorrow. I'm yeah. uh, non-binary the next day." Um, self ID, no, no place in society. F- you know, in 2023, no way. You're just putting too many women and children at risk mm-hmm. f- for men's feelings not to be hurt. Um, I don't really know how we get to the end of this, but we don't get anywhere until you start listening to women. And when we're drowned out yesterday, and that was like, quite, where that, are we going to start? Was that in? I, I feel like, you know. So wait. So let's just clarify the term. So I'm I'm on thing, and we're all on, on board. This TRA is trans rights activists, yep. right? And then TERFs is trans exclusionary radical, radical feminists. feminists. Yeah, and I, I don't consider myself a feminist. No? Like I've never yeah, no nice. Like I never have. Like everything was fought for. Everything was won. I was fine. You know, yeah. everything was fine. This is the only thing I've actually actively been an activist over, I suppose. And I'm quite a reluctant one, but I looked around going, well, nobody else is going to talk. Yeah. You know, and if nobody else will, then I have to. That's, that's, so, so okay. So those are the terms. But you're not, so what you just, you consider yourself a woman's rights yeah, activist. That's yeah, I, that's and, like, and child safety and child you know, sa- and child safeguarding. Well, I do think like you know when you look at stuff like Drag Queen Story Hour, and now everyone's like, "Well, what's the big problem?" It's like, why are you you're a drag queen? Like, why you want to dance in front of a kid? Yeah, it's like you're why why do you want? But then you know what? I've kind of here's what I've kind of changed because I think this. I think it's an ideology, right? I don't think that it should be pushed in schools, right? No, and it, and I. And I think it should be like, but it should be available. Like, you know, if you're a Muslim, you want to send your kid to a Muslim school, you should be allowed to. And if and if you want to, like, I would never send, Navarro will never go to a drag queen story hour, right? Yeah. She, But if they want to do that to their kids and they want to do it and they want to transition their children, I personally think down the line, if you transition a kid at 13, you're going to have 10 years down the line, you're going to have some big problems, right? That's my personal opinion. But, they should be allowed to do that with their family and their kids. And that should be a right. Because I'm kind of like, let people do what they want with their their bodies and with their life. But at 13, that's irreversible damage but at here's, 13. Here's, 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 yeah, well, but that's why you go, you go. I would say, I think I've said this before, but I, I think like, look, I understand the arguments for it. Like if you do it at 13, you know, you're going to be more passing when you grow up. So you sit down, what I would say, I, talking about England, I don't know about the rest of the world. You can sit down with your, your parents or your guardians or whatever. Everything's explained. And from the NHS point of view, they'd say, we will support your transition fully forever. However, you sign away any legal kind of culpability that you can come back at us if you've changed your mind when you were like 20 or something. Mm-hmm. And also, we won't help you detransition. So they understand the consequences. That's what I would do. That's my They're thing. getting a lifelong patient. That's money, man. So you think it's a money? So this is the thing. Why is it suddenly blown up now? Like why? So like why? Well, I think lockdown. Like there's a. It was a perfect storm. You know, gender ideology. I believe I'm not like a scholar on it or anything. Um, but I've watched the the docos, Matt Walsh's mm-hmm. one and some others, and um, it's the idea that human beings can change sex. It, it's like a medical experiment. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's oh, yeah. And that sort of started way back in, I don't know, the 50s or 60s by some pedophiles. Yeah. And um, now it's in infiltrated into like this, what we have today, which is where normal 
people genuinely think people have, you know, could be born in the wrong body. Like they're just not questioning it. Well, I think, you know, I think, you know, I think, you know what it is. I think you said it earlier on, you hit the nail on the head. So many people are afraid to discuss, even discuss this. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know I've spoken to people like outside of comedy and just regular people and they'll, they'll, they'll tell you their actual views. Yeah. But if you, you know, there won't be their views like. No, oh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, do what you want. So it's, I think a lot of people are scared because they, you know, they've got their livelihoods on the line. They've got their, you know, their livelihoods on the line. They've got their reputation on the line. They and, also don't want to hurt people's feelings and neither yeah. do I. Yeah. You know, like. But, oh well, for God. example, so there's the TR. Is it? Um, there's a guy online now, Der- or a, a non-binary person. Maybe it's a woman. I don't know. Der- Derek Mul- Mulville or someone. Have you seen that? Oh, uh, Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan Dylan Mulvaney. Maybe it's not him. There's two of them. There's one who's like, I'm 365 days. I'm a girl That's now. That's Dylan Mulvaney. And there's one other one. Yeah, I can't. I don't know. And it's been making like super creepy, like the creepiest. I was like, if your parents don't acknowledge you. Oh, Jeffrey Marsh. Jeffrey Marsh. He is a fucking groomer, man. Yeah. He yeah. looks proper nonce. And he, he, uh, there was a, there's a UK comedian, Muslim comedian, and she's been calling him out saying, listen, if that was just a straight white man making these videos saying, yeah. Oh, cool. Well, you can contact me. Everyone be like, someone called it, someone check his hard drives, right? This is the nonciest nonce of yeah, yeah, yeah. in time, right? Anyway, she made these videos and people like, and she's, you know, she's, she's now been, she's just this, like yesterday. Or, you know, the comedian? Ago, she's the comedian. She made videos. She's a Muslim comedian. She's new. Yeah. I'm not actually good with her, but she's making these videos she's, she's, and he's parodying them. But she said, look, if that was a white guy, straight white man, and he was telling your kids to contact him, you'd be like, check. That's weird, right? Yeah. So just, I want you to think that. Anyway, she's been making these videos. They've been kind of like. People have been watching that. Yeah, she's talking sense. Then trans rights activists found out where she lived, sent her her um. This her, woman is she a comedian? She's a comedian. Oh, they sent I shared her, that. I didn't know she was a comic. She's a comic. Yeah, right. she, they sent her. Yeah, they found out where she lived, where her daughters went to school, where her children mm. went to school, and scared her. So she now just issued a video saying, "Look, I'm I'm out. Do what you just don't come after my family." So it's, yep. it's like it's a scary thing to yep. push up against. It is. Fight back. It can be. Yeah. I mean, yesterday, standing on the steps of Parliament House was the first time I saw it in the flesh, the visceral, like, palpable hatred towards women who dared to speak about their rights. And a lot of the people in the crowd, the trans rights activists, which is... And these Australians? These are Australian or... or Mostly, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know everybody's nationality that was there, but the, the... Counter protest that was down there on the steps, drowning uh, beneath the steps, drowning us out. I was like, my heart was beating, man. It was over two hundred people hating me for talking mm. about my rights to single sex spaces, my daughter's right not to be indoctrinated by a religion that her mother doesn't believe in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just, it was quite. I was quite shaken. And I last see, night I when I the... went to bed, I. I had a little, like, not very long or anything, but I just had a little cry to let out all of that. It was, ju- yeah, it was really tough when so you've you got know, 200 a man would, a man something people. would never people. cry. Yeah. <laughs> we'll never never cry. Um, yeah. 200 people. 200 just... people hating you for just asking to be heard about certain things. It's like, it's insane. I mean, it's, I, wa- I only saw the short clip, 30 seconds. Like, people like going like this, sorry. Oh, really? Yeah. And intimidating you. are just you. like, what the fuck? And I asked the police guy, I was like, because I was at the event in Sydney, yeah. which was last Saturday, I believe, and um, there were two, three hundred metres between us and the counter-protest. The mm-hmm. police formed a big line and got them well away so we could talk, mm-hmm. um, but not in Adelaide because uh, it's not like it's a state by state. They can decide things. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. not a federal legislation thing. And um, the guy, the copper... He was just like, yeah, well, they've got every right to be here as well, they've, blah, blah, blah. And I said, but they're intimidating us. We've booked this place to speak about our rights to each other and they're, like, drowning us out. Is that – he was like, they've got the right to free speech, blah, blah, And I was like, fine, whatever. I walked away and we just got on with it and screamed and they, like, screamed into the microphones to be heard and they screamed, you know, rape threats and whatever. 
They actually shit made like rape that. threats. Someone got a rape threat, yeah, but um, not me. And just the placards, you know, it's like bash a turf, make your life, make your community safe. It's mm. just like, what the fuck? Which is bash a just woman. Mis- yeah, bash a woman who dares to speak about her rights. And eventually the cops did move them on because they were just bullies. And thank God, and then we were able to talk. I mean, I think, I think that like that the, that side of things is is so bullying. Mm. But I think now people see the tactics they're using. And the, the reason I ask, are oh, they Australian, right? One, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm autistic, obviously. But two, the reason why is because the 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 same. If they're in America, if they're so, in, you did let women speak in Glasgow, right? Mm. The same people turn out exactly mm. like carbon copy. Mm. So it's not like you said it is an it's an ideology. Like it doesn't matter where you're from because you're exactly the same. So they in uh, the Scotland one, I can't. They also had a sign and it had something like behead a turf or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Also, and exactly that. And now in Adelaide, other side of, of the world, of the world, same, same thing. Yeah. So. It's, it's it's definitely yeah like an ideology and it's intimidating but i'm not sure if it's reflective of you know 90 percent of trans people maybe it is but i don't know that's what i'm thinking but you briefly touched on our we mentioned pedophiles right and we've said this before i think the reason and I know I, and I'm going to contradict myself massively, but I do it all the time. The reason I said, like, oh, yeah, if you're 13, you can, you should be able to transition and you push back on it. Yeah? Mm. Right. Like in the same person, right? That, that makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying this because for ease of life, let them do what they want. It's not my life. Right. But the thing is, if, you, if you're saying, oh, a 13 year old is of sound enough mind to transition or a 12 year old or whatever it is, they can transition whatever the age they do, then why do they have to wait till they're. 16 18 to have sex why can't they have sex at 13 why can't they make that decision so my conspiracy theory is that there, this is part of a thing to lower because if if you can transition at 13 why can't you have sex you can t- cut it's your dick a off good at it's a good theory and a lot of people are onto it that's that's what they I'm think thinking. this is all for that end game and, a, and it could be yeah a lot of fur what did you what was the who <laughs> actually let's make it a bit lighter who was the maddest looking TRA that you saw in the crowd? There must have been some real bad, some, some funny ones. Oh, any, any any furries? I didn't see any furries. Um, I saw uh, there was just some old men who clearly did not pass as women, which were kind of amusing. Yeah. Um, not to be mean, but it's like just try. But that's what I'm saying though. You just try. do it. Do it in your own home. Like you, you know, try harder though. But that's the thing. Like you. There's me, there's someone in a dress and there's someone who's really committed to it. And I think I actually, to the, my reading, a lot, a lot of these dudes were incels or a lot of these trans people might have been incels and now they're like, they've done, they've, uh, Posey Parker, Kelly Jane Key, she was like, this erodes like lesbian rights, right? It mm. can't even be. If there's no a, sex, then there's no yeah. same sex attraction as yeah. JK Rowling said. And she's, what's your, what's your take on JK Rowling? She's incredibly brave. Um, I don't think she hates trans people at all. I think she's been really, really clear about that. Um, but nobody listens, obviously. Mm-hmm. And we are defamed everywhere we go with what we say. Um, but, no, I think J.K. Rowling's amazing. And how have you found – you back on – try and bring this back on board. Like that you said uh, you might have tangibly lost work that you're unsure of, right, within comedy. That's what you think. Yeah. How have how you found you've like you're standing with your your? Because I don't know because I'm not like in Australia, right? Like, yeah. Like your like your your peers. How do you feel? Um. Well, I post a lot of things on my private Instagram account, and I know a lot of people don't agree with me, and I feel like they're nice to my face, but probably think I'm a bit bigoted. Um. But I'm okay with that. Uh. I think career wise, like I just I can't couldn't tell you, but I feel like you know I am a good enough comedian. No, they are a bit further ahead than yeah. I am. Uh, having a baby slowed that down too. But at this stage, like I said, I'm like I'm prepared to take the hit to sort of be at least one more person chipping away at this because it has to stop. Mm-hmm. Not, but then, not so people then... can't you know call themselves Susie and wear a dress. Whatever, we don't give a fuck. Yeah. We actually don't care. They're so narcissistic. They think yeah. we're anti-trans. It's like we're just talking about women's rights, actually, okay. and you're shutting us down because you're a pig. So, you just, so it, tangibly, that would be trans women in prisons. Yeah, 
Yeah, so and rape shelters. rape shelters. Yeah, and okay. then just genuine toilets because mm. little girls go to the toilets, mm-hmm. women, you know, it happens. Mm-hmm. And even if they're not raping people, which has happened, um, just the the flashing because autogynephilia, which is what a lot of these men have. Mm-hmm. Is, Can you just explain what that is? Autogynephilia is... Um, I know, obviously, but... <laughs> it's when men are sexually aroused by the thought of themselves as women. Okay. And so they go, you know, they dress up in these horrifically, stereotypically sexist versions of women, caricatures, you know, the short sh- skirts and the high heels and the, and they go into these women's only spaces and take photos of their junk because they're turned on by that invasion of our space. Mm-hmm. That's, that's nuts. It's fucked. And so, yeah, what it's I'm trying to say hot, is like though. even if they're not raping people, they're still like exposing themselves. Little girls don't need to see fucking balls and dicks. And then you had the wee sparses. Um, yeah. Which was, which was nuts as Another well. Another one, yeah. It's like I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. It's like, listen, if you're going to be a trans woman, right, why are you exposing yourself in the spa other than to call? Offense, assert their I'm dominance. Sh- yeah, but I'm because they're men at the end of the day. But remember? I'm sure that most most wouldn't do that. You know, they discreetly go into the cubicle, they change, and you know, just playing. You know, I'm trying to play devil's advocate. But yeah. then you've got these that make the news stories like that, and you're like, this is hurting their side. But it so this a- is where we come back to the what do we do about this as a society? Because mm-hmm. we can't tell as women. You, you can't tell which one's nefarious and which one's not. So we have to just blanket say no. Mm-hmm. We have to. There's no other solution for women's only spaces anyway. Like um, people calling themselves different names and stuff, wearing female clothes. Like obviously I don't have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to women's actual sex-based rights – we have to be very clear on this, or else it's just gonna g- go so bad. So, what, what what do you? Okay, so what do you think is where could it go? Like, what what is the? Well, it's already at the point where people think that w- womanhood is a pair of high heels and some lipstick. You know, that's a well, stereotypical. It's, it's, well, it's not. That's not what it is. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, naive. like that's that's what it is when people say, "Oh, you're just clearly a woman." It's like, mm, no, that. Lipstick isn't what a woman is. High heels isn't what a woman is. Um, Can you define a woman? <laughs> it's an adult human female. Well, that's quite easy. You should be the next prime minister of the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so apart from all the safety stuff, right? Yeah. Like it is obviously a danger to women for men to be able to self-ID because we know that predators will abuse that. Mm-hmm. And there may be some genuine trans women who think they're women and they've got mental issues and I feel for them not being able to use the toilets that they think they're entitled to mm-hmm. or the facilities and services. So what about But we sh- can't just go around affirming people's mental delusions. So like, unisex toilets, but still women's s- toilets. Uh what sorry. Uh, so to have like a unis so a solution, a unisex toilet, then a woman's toilet and then a men's toilet. Yeah. I mean, we've done lots of things. We've put ramps through society, yeah. you know, on footpaths and stuff. They weren't around all those, I don't know, 30-odd years ago. Like, they're all – we did that for people in wheelchairs and stuff. Like, to we honest, can do things. It's incredibly inconvenient, all these ramps. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 in your – this you're with, you're with Kelly J. Keene. You mentioned they vetted you. How, what, what, how does the – what was the vetting process? Like, what are they doing? They just um, – They – you get a Zoom – just a Zoom chat and they, yeah. you know. So you spoke to? You spoke, I spoke to, not Kelly. I didn't meet her until yesterday, um, which was pretty mind-blowing. Yeah, but I was pretty cool, you yeah. know. I was, well, she, she I like wasn't too starstruck. To yeah, she is a bit, yeah. yeah she's yeah. a bit. We, we kind of vaguely know her because of, you know, because of Constantine and trigonometry and yeah. Francis. So we kind of, she's like, we, we know her and I've seen her, but uh, she's very brave. Like she's, she's so brave. Like, and her insistence on the truth broke the spell for me. Not that I thought trans women were literally women, but I was just like, whatever, you know. Yeah. But now I know, no, this actually does affect women mm-hmm. in a really negative way if we allow it to, like, you know, get out of control, like a grass yeah. fire. Um, and I don't know what the solution is, you know, because obviously we've gone really far down this track and but, a lot of people 
fully believe that people can change sex. I mean, what's funny to me is that someone like Kelly J. Keene, 10 years ago, would have been like the most lefty, like, do you know what I mean? Like, the, the and now she's like, oh, you're... Now she's getting called right wing, yeah. which is just more defamation. Yeah. Crazy. But yeah, it's crazy. So, so when you were when they did the, the Zoom call, what were they saying? What like? What, what, uh, what were the they questions? just were just. Maybe, maybe I can't can even remember, them. but I broke down crying because of what I've lost due to standing up to it. And they, you know, um, they were like, "Oh, yep, <laughs> you yeah. know, she's clearly not a yeah. trans rights activist in disguise." Well, I mean, they could tell because of your hair color; it's not pink. <laughs> or blue, which is usually the first warning sign, right? Yeah, you tell yeah. Them pink or blue hair, or you look like a hentai anime character. I had to catch myself yesterday, you know, because the two hundred or so people looking at you like you're scum. It's mm. quite. Uh, it makes you angry. Mm. I had to catch myself and be like, it, you know, they've. How many did? How many turned out for the for the women? What was it a good turnout Ooh, for you guys? We would have been maybe f- half of them. Oh wow! So they overpowered you. But in Glasgow, it's quite big. Glasgow. Oh, yeah. Adelaide's a very conservative town. It's a small town. I know a lot of women who are fully on board with this, but they're not prepared to be at a, at a public event like that, yeah. you know. Um, also, it's quite early. It was at 12, which is, <laughs> which is early for me. I was going to go down and do street interviews. I thought it would be funny, but girl, we didn't wake up in time. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, just, yeah, I guess I had to catch myself to think that they not take it personally they've been indoctrinated they literally do think i'm the devil and um they're quite young oh I, they're so young this is this they is, were kids this is what was interesting i was uh, there's a video and someone was saying oh, you're gonna get old this and they're all they're young and they're, they're, their yeah. minds are still shaped but all of the it's a younger kind of movement no or yes or what do you think oh, i think um it's just captured the younger generations especially over the last few years because of TikTok and social TikTok, media. TikTok, lockdowns, um, and it was heading that way anyway. But yeah. yeah. And universities, of course. Oh, yeah. You know, how the universities have gone all woke and they're, they're rolling this ideology out, you know, and critical race theory and stuff like that. So this, but, but you mentioned, so you, this is all linked in because I was chatting in Australia now, before you, before you do a show, you have to do uh, some sort of speech. You have to do like the Microsoft speech. Like we acknowledge that this land is part of indigenous tribes or whatever. And and for me, that's just like, who's this for? You're not helping Aborigines <laughs> with this, right? You're basically saying, yeah, we've stolen your land. We feel bad about it. Feel bad for us for feeling bad, but you can't have it back. It's like it's the worst. Yeah, you're right. It's like, yeah, making white people feel better. Yeah, so and, it's um, all it in is. What do you think though, like just by us having this conversation – now that we're kind of fueling kind of this whole move trans rights movements or turf movement the whole thing's being fueled because we're adding five this is because everyone's talking about this now and maybe if we weren't it would die away or what do you think about if that? we didn't talk about this it would just keep going like do you know what i mean like it it's good that we're talking about it because you're hearing a woman's side yeah. that is sort of going against the grain mainstream grain you, you I mean, said, is it prolonging it? I, if women lose their rights, I don't think that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. So you're against stuff like pregnant people. Oh yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. Mm. Birthing people, birthing people, birthing yeah, people. penis havers. You said that we're going to cop flack for this. Well, this, you guys might a we, little bit. We, for we won't. No, 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 no one. Given this no one, evil turf a platform. No, nah, I think we think. I think they'll love it. Our, our listeners. <laughs> um, <laughs> Additionally, you you do comedy, but you also do, you also work in film. You're a filmmaker as well, which obviously I forgot to mention at the top because I'm unprepared and it's very hot. But you're a filmmaker, and that is you've actually had tangible threats. You were mentioning to your filmmaker. Oh yeah, I had um last year. I went on a date with a guy, and this stuff came up, and our positions were polar opposite, and that you know second date didn't happen. Oh wow. Um, which is fine. If it was a deal breaker for him, it was for me as well. A, can I ask you a personal question? Sure. Did did, did you get laid? Did they, did they get laid? No. Okay. <laughs> wow. So he was willing to... But had you not been at this impasse on this thing, was getting laid on the card? No oh. way. Because oh, it was ugly. Well, the reason, <laughs> I'm, the reason I'm asking, right, is because, man, if the ideology is over getting laid, 
then you know it's real kind of like strong. Do you understand? Like most men will yeah, start right, absolutely right. anything they believe in to get laid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's crazy. So uh, so gone. You got on a date, filmmaker. Um, no, he wasn't a filmmaker, but his friend is. And just a couple of nights later, I got a barrage of abuse from this filmmaker. Holy shit. Saying, like, I'm going to actively make sure you don't get gigs. You're a Karen. You're a fucking this. You're a that. And I was just like, what the Dude, that's fuck. fuck is this? Then did you reply? What did you say? Um, I don't think I did reply. I I, I screenshotted it and sent it to the guy who I went on the date with. I was like, what is this about? Why are you sending people after me? Yeah. And then two seconds later, the guy who was sending me abuse sends me another message saying, yeah, this is why people don't like you because I'd snitched. Wow. And like the guy had obviously said, oh, she sent me a screenshot of you. I don't know what happened, but um, I was sitting at the cranker a few weeks later and the filmmaker got out of a taxi unbeknownst to me right behind me and he slammed the door right behind my face. Oh, wow. Just weird just intimidating and i've never said and anything anti like you know trans people should die Mm. anything like that Mm. just i don't think children should be indoctrinated their bodies should be left intact Mm -hmm. and until 18 and you know and then they're free to do whatever they want and um women uh women are not dickless men and men can't be women it's uh aside from all the safety issues it's just insulting into men because it always seems to me it's like this is a big issue about trans women. But what about trans men? Because in a well, way, well, they don't pose a threat. No, but I'm not talking about trans. I mean, but it's part of this issue, and I think trans men get forgotten in this, which is funny when they say, "Ah, oh, uh, when they talk about sport, for example, and stuff like that." No one's got a problem with trans men. Yeah, so yeah, come, yeah. Come on and tr- try and play, try and play football. Huh? You can't. Because you were a woman. That's not the point. The point is that they but they don't have the strength. They don't have the thing. And it's not an issue. Yeah. Right? So like when in rugby, they said uh, they give warnings to trans men. So they, they say, we don't think you should play with men mm. because you're in danger of, mm. you know, getting injured. Even That's though interesting. you're on testosterone, right? Yeah. Whereas the other way around, you know, they, they oh, go, go nuts. Yeah. yeah. So it's just that. But I'm... I, I, I guess as well, though, like a lot of girls now, they're like, like I said, we saw that the anorexia is going down, trans searches on Google going up, and you're getting a lot of women, well, girls, you know, on the, you know, double mastectomies. And I feel and, saddened by it. I'm not, you know, threatened, obviously, by yeah. trans men, yeah. um, as I am as a woman by trans women mm-hmm. being in my spaces and taking my prizes or whatever. But, uh, I do know trans men, they were lesbians. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of like, is this is this transing the gay away? Are they just lesbians who now don't have boobs mm-hmm. and are taking testosterone? Um, Bit of an issue. I don't really care, to be honest. Fuck, if you're an adult and you want to chop your tits off and grow a beard, fucking go for it. Mm-hmm. But... Don't just, trans kids and don't tell me I need to accept men in my places and spaces. I think that's a good way to end the pod. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Well, thank cool. you, Biddy, for coming uh, on the pod. We're going to do a Patreon episode now. But before we do, where can uh, our illustrious viewers, where can they watch? Oh, by the way, I've, obviously I forgot, this podcast is proudly presented by High Point Care. So we've got, we've got a CBD sponsor. Highpoint.care for all your CBD needs. If you uh, have any aches or pains or seek mental clarity go on highpoint.care use the code 3sp you'll get 10 percent off we'll get some money i mean we won't because we never sent them our bank details but we might um highpoint.care but where can uh, our listeners viewers watch you where can we find you because your comedy just your filmmaking is great as well actually i, I saw your the dingo film and the zombie film is great thank like, you really really good <laughs> and if you think this shot looks good biddy helped helped us frame the shot um but your comedy was great like i'm Thank really you. good tight writing like i was just damn cheating because she's actually writing which is cheating but mm-hmm. really good so where can we where can we follow you where can we find you um well i've got instagram at biddy o'loughlin and i've got a but website that's private though no dolly pops is private ah, okay that's the other one don't go to that one. don't well you know try <laughs> um biddy o'loughlin i've got a website which has got all my um short films on it yeah. but you can't really find and will you be coming to Edinburgh? Are you coming to the UK anytime? You were just in Galway, right? Yeah, I did Galway Comedy Festival last year. That was great. And I did Unleashed when I was in London. Okay, right. 
We're going to discuss that on the pod if you want to hear about Comedy Unleashed and how Biddy did there. We'll I haven't seen it. They've got the footage and they've... Uh... We'll hold it with, to do that in the podcast. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll do that thing. So, because yeah. I like fans of that. Thanks for listening to this episode. Hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it enjoyable. Please follow Biddy. Thanks so much for doing this. Uh, it's been the three-speech podcast on the hottest day of the year. <laughs> I'm sweating. Hope I'm you enjoy. Bye. Bye.